Creator Pro Wrestling fans, I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert Heartache Tonight was a great show from the Knights of Columbus, Columbus in um, Lindbrook, New York. Uh, ooh. By the way, uh, I'll get to uh, the door opening up and stuff and later on. But um, the event um, kicks off with the five-way match for the Mayhem Medal as the outdoorsman Cliff Marshall returned for after a long absence. I hadn't seen him on a show in a long time. Cliff Marshall versus Sebastian Amore versus Jay George versus Tristy and Kyle versus the sweeper Eddie Prevetti. Well, Tristy and Kyle came out first, and he was running down the crowd, and I really couldn't hear him that well, because Jay George also had the microphone, and, you know, pretty hot and heavy action to start start off the show. You know, great to see the Mayhem Metal being defended in a multi-person match again. And the end result came where the sweeper, Eddie Prevetti, defeated Tristy and Kyle, Jay George, Sebastian Amore, and the outdoorsman Cliff Marshall to retain the Mayhem medal. And the funny thing is, after Prevetti had already won and ring it out to Ryan Pease and announced to the crowd that he, that the sweeper had won the match, Jay George tried to pin Tristy and Kyle, but I don't know, something went wrong there? I don't know. All right. Next up was a singles match, as we saw, I don't know if we still, Vlog Bro University, Dante Drago, uh, we went one on one with uh, Dirty Bulk Bronson. Pretty good matchup. Uh, Bronson announced that his Nona was in attendance from Italy. I don't know if that was his grandmother or another relative of his. And uh, he did. He mentioned that while he when he brought Drago, Dante Drago to outside at one point. I forgot what Drago said in our direction. And I put on my Dolph Lundgren voice and said, You must be broken. And I think those in front of me laughed at that one. Uh, Bronson puts Dante Drago away with the, the derailleur. That, um, that double choke. Well, actually, it was, no, actually, before it was the derailleur. It was actually the, the big, it was actually, no, it was called Total Penetration by the late Big Dick Dudley. Then it was known as derailleur when uh, Matt Bloom started wrestling his A train. Bronson got uh, the victory. Okay, then it was a first round match for the in the tournament to crown the first ever women's champion. As the general manager of Creative Pro Wrestling, the answer to your prayers, Ariella Nix took on the Nomi Gabby Forza. Uh, what happened? I don't know. I don't know how uh, often Ariella Nix has been wrestling lately, but she hadn't been wrestling on a Creative Pro show in some time. Uh, Forza managed to pin Nix with a schoolgirl, and then she, I think at that point, Pat Fitzpatrick and Jameis Seas come out, and they managed to get the mic from Ryan Peterson, and she says, no, and I, I forgot, she says, I'm the GM, I'm changing, I'm, you know, I'm changing the rules, and I don't know what she said after that. But the match was restarted. Uh, eventually, Forza puts Nix in a sleeper hold, and Nix taps out. And again, Fitzpatrick and Macias get the mic from Ryan Peterson, bring it to to her, to Nix, and you know she says, you know, no submissions. And then um, they go at it again, and I don't exactly know how, but Forza ended up pinning Ariel and Nix for a second time to ultimately advance in the tournament. <sighs> Next up, we saw the ro rocker boy, Nick Robles, who entered the ring entered the ring to Twisted Sisters' I Wanna Rock. He took on the former interim Creative Pro champion, Dominican Destroyer Vargas. Um, I can't remember exactly what move it was, but uh, Vargas defeated a uh, rocker boy, Nick Robles, to win the match. And... After the match, Vargas attacks Robles, and also out comes General Manager Ariella Nix, Pat Fitzpatrick, and Jameis Seas to the ring. And Vargas 
Patrick and Jay are triple teaming Robles, but until Bronson comes out and Bronson is face to face with Vargas, and at that point the fans are yelling beef or meat or I forgot what they were saying. But Ariel and Nick's got between Bronson and Vargas before they came to blows, and she like pulled Vargas away from the ring. But then out comes uh, the most professional wrestler, Brian Myers. He comes out and he says, "You know, I like the uh, that idea of Bronson and Vargas, but I, how about this?" And then announces to the crowd that Creative Pro Wrestling will be back in action on Friday night, October thirteenth, as they return to Melville. As he said it'll be Bronson versus Vargas versus Impact Wrestling's Moose. Okay. Uh, after that, up next we have tag team action as we saw one half of the Even Stevens. Steve Somerset joined forces with Phil Cardigan as they did battle with Eric James and VSK, the Adrenaline Express. Well, right before the match got underway... Eric James once again came out and sang the Backstreet Boys song, I, <coughs> I, want, it, <coughs> I want It That Way, brother. Uh, I forgot, was it Eric or VSK took the microphone before their match got underway and said that they wanted to face, um, challenge the Midlife Express for the tag team title on Friday, October 13th. And... Eventually, as as they still were talking, still doing the promo, Somerset and Card Cardigan attacked, and the match got underway. Uh, the Adrenaline Express defeated Somerset and Cardigan to win the match. Ooh, next up was a singles competition, as we saw no longer Dr. Cool, the artist, Jake Lang, as he went one-on-one -on -one with making his return, Platinum Max Caster. Very good match these two had. Uh, Max Caster eventually... Well, he actually beat uh, Jake Lang with the mic drop, which is the uh, the uh, elbow from the top rope. And after the match, Max noticed uh, somebody with a custom-made cut-out paper scissors in the crowd. And it was a young lady dressed, had also had her face painted up like Rosemary. And Max asked, had told her, you know, bring her into the ring and... Max asked her name, and she said, did she say Skyler is her name? I mean, the crowd, crowd chatted her name. And uh, Max also had his custom AEW belt with, like, a scissors at, at the end, and she took her... The, the, the scissors... Ugh. If you... If, 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 watch it on Twitch if you didn't watch it live or you weren't there. And they, they scissored each other. You know, her... Custom made scissors and his uh, scissors belt. They like did that. At one point during the match, I think Caster, although Jake Lang kicked out of kicked out a pinfall attempt, and Max Caster scissored referee Stephen Dumeng. And at that point, as Skyler was being ushered back out of the ring. Jake Lang was about to attack Max from behind, but out comes Bobby Orlando, who was attacked by Jake Lang back at, uh, back at, at the July 30th show, which was titled Breaking Boundaries, after they lost the tag match, and Bobby took the microphone, he said, Jake Lang... How about Friday, October 13th, you and I one-on-one -on -one and anything goes. All right. At that point, they did go to intermission. The, uh, ooh. Yeah. The next match. Hmm. Well, actually, well, they came back from intermission. We have tag team action as the Phoenix, GKM, and Leo... S Sparrow, the Birds of the Sun, challenged Kevin Tibbs and CPA, the Midlife Express, for the Tag Team Championship. And the crowd and I, we took part in, we basically had a, we decided to have, create a karaoke. Or karaoke a pro. <laughs> uh, create, create a karaoke singer, I guess. Yeah, maybe that's, that's next, that'll be next. 
as we sang the Midlife Express's theme, which is uh, My Sacrifice by Creed. Good matchup these two teams uh, had, and um, I forgot how it ended, but uh, the Midlife Express did defeat the Birds of the Sun to retain the Tag Team Championship. All right. Next up was another uh, title match, as we saw the man who, in my opinion, just can't get a break in creative pro wrestling, Liam Davis, as he challenged Bobby Orlando for the television championship. I can't really remember how this one ended, but uh, a good match which saw Bobby Orlando defeat Liam Davis to retain the television championship, and by virtue of Bobby's victory, by the time by when October thirteenth, by the time October thirteenth rolls around, Bobby Orlando will have been television champion for over a year. He had won the belt on September seventeenth of twenty twenty two at Wildlife, and considering he just retained the title. And this very show, Heartache Tonight. Ooh, my eyes. The, um, you know, Orla Bobby O had been TV champion for over a year by the time the um, October 13th event rolls around. Okay, the next matchup, we see the other first round match of the women's title tournament. As we saw Impact Wrestling's Rosemary to go one-on-one -on -one with the notorious Mimi. Uh, good matchup these two ladies had. I don't know if this was their first ever one-on-one -on -one meeting. And I can't remember how, the, how it ended, but Notorious Mimi pinned Rosemary to win the match, and she moves on in the women's title tournament. And then it was time for the main event, which saw Evil Kip challenge Bryce Donovan for the heavyweight championship. Um, what the stipulation is, if Evil Kip loses, he will have to leave Creative Pro Wrestling. Now, ooh, these guys really tried, tried their best, and, like, early in the match, I forgot what Kip said, said, and at one point, Sierra, who was dressed up as, uh, cosplaying as Philip Cardigan, I forgot what Kip said to her, but she basically, gave, she gave him a sight for the bird watchers. Okay, and the match went on. Eventually, Bryce accidentally hit uh, referee Stephen Dumang. Uh, Bryce, I think, chokeslammed Kip, but there was no referee count. I forgot what Kip used to put down Bryce, and he tried for a pin. There was no referee, but a second referee comes out. He's making, I think, Bryce kicked out of that pin attempt. Eventually, I think the referee didn't catch it, but I don't know if, uh, I can't remember. I mean... Just like, um, you know, like every time these wrestling shows I go to, once they go in the books, I, I my thinking, you know, my memory is just like, just like Puddle of Mud said, everything's so blurry. Who doesn't like that song? Um, I forgot, but Kip had had pinned Bryce Donovan. But then all and seemingly won the championship, but referee Stephen Dumang, who was out on the floor, he noticed Bryce had put his foot on the rope, and Dumang went to to referee Ryan Peterson and told him, "Wait a minute, wait, 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 the, his foot was on the rope. The match has to continue." And Ryan Peterson announced to the crowd, "The match had to continue," and I think it was uh, the black hole slam, which Abyss was known for, and I think another choke slam. And the referee made a three count. Bryce Donovan defeats Evil Kip to retain the heavyweight championship. And by as with all of the pre-match stipulation, Evil Kip must lead Creative Pro Wrestling forever. Um, Bryce invited some of the guys to come out, and out came Steve Somerset, Phil Cardigan, Midlife Express, and the sweeper Eddie Prevetti with the broom, and he was literally sweeping Kip out of the ring. And Bryce said, Take pick this, take this guy and take it and throw him out the front door. And they literally carried Kip away from the ring, through the crowd, out the, out the well, it was actually the back door where we come in to enter the building for the shows. All right? From there, Bryce Dodd was saying, you know, now that evil Kip is gone, you know, who's going to face me? Who's going to step up and face me next for, the, for this belt? And he said, when October 13th arrives, he will made it made, it, made 500 days as champion. But then 
the dime piece Aaron Rourke's music starts playing. Three masked men come through the crowd and they hit the ring and they attack Bryce from behind. And there were two women also wearing masks and they're holding up signs. One lady had a sign that said Aaron on one side. The other side said October 13th. And the lady, the other lady, masked lady had a sign that said Rourke. And on the back of that it said and new. And it's the silly thing was... I think the ladies didn't uh, have match. I think like, well, I don't know. Well, somebody was chatting, you fucked up at them. And I couldn't help but say, botcha mania at that point in time. Well, personal notes. Uh, great sitting with Tommy, his girlfriend, Robin, Jameson. And welcome back, Jeffrey, who hadn't been to a wrestling show for, in like a year. I hadn't seen Jeffrey since Wildlife, September of last year. Uh, I noticed the, the lovely Tiffany in, in the crowd. Uh, Sierra was there. Uh, by the way, the doors, the crowd, the doors, the crowd was let in at seven o three p.m. Um, unless I'm mistaken, this show didn't may may not have sold out because uh, I think tickets were still available. Maybe an hour before the. The, the, the crowd was let in. All right. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. All right. Well, here's um some memorable quotes. <laughs> he did the booty butt. Some guy sitting near me. When uh, Vargas rammed his backside into rock, rocker boy Nick Robles. You pay by numbers! That same dude who, uh, towards uh, Jake Lang during his match with Platinum Max Caster. Commentary! That little, little guy sitting in front of me during the match between Notorious Mimi and Rosemary. No Bush League psych out stuff! One guy behind me during Notorious Mimi and Rosemary match. Okay. Oh, great seeing Ryan Peterson. How could I forget that, dude? I'm glad I used the bathroom uh, before an admission came. Where everybody gets up and, and goes and stuff. All right. As mentioned, Creative Pro Wrestling returns to Melville, New York on Friday night, October 13th. Uh, no show title yet, folks, but uh, among the matches or that looks like it's going to be happening, it looks like it'll be uh, Bronson versus Vargas versus Moose. It looks like it's good. it'll be Bobby Orlando against um, Jake Lang, where anything goes. And I guess that, that may or may not be for the television championship. Uh, looks like Bryce Donovan defending the championship against Aaron Rourke. Looks like Midlife Express, it gets, it could be, wow, Midlife Express, Adrenaline Express 2, just for the tag team title. Uh, oh, a few things were announced. Um, it's going to, on, on Friday night, October 13th, it's the return of the Halloween Costume Rumble. Rumble. I, I thought I said rubble, thinking of Bernie. I think it was the dumbest character on the Flintstones. The Halloween, Halloween costume rumble. All right. That's where many creative pro wrestlers usually come to the ring in costume, and it's a Royal Rumble match. Um, it appears, uh, wow. Oh, actually, they announced also appearing will be former ECW heavyweight champion, Suicidal, homicidal, genocidal, the man who loves to point it, point it, up, point it to ceiling above, Sabu. Don't think he'll be wrestling, because I think he did retire from active wrestling for, for a few years now. Maybe even longer. And making her return to create a pro wrestling, current AEW TBS champion, Chris Statlander. Oh, a few things I've got to point out. After the show had officially ended, uh, Dante Drago, Dante Drago was uh, giving out 
had a stamper in his, in his hand, and he was, you know, stamping. He was giving everybody exit stamps as everybody was heading out the door, and you could see mine right here. Uh, and, and then when I went out the door, I see Evil Kip uh, arguing with referee... Uh, referee Stephen Dumang, and he's claiming he's a knight of the Knights of Columbus. And just as I was taking my started taking my leave, four, for, count it, four vehicles up from the Lindbrook Police Department showed up. Well, I don't know if they were there for Kip or somebody else, or or some neighbors complained about the noise from the building or what the ordeal was. <laughs> By the way, and you know, oh, another thing I've got to mention, definitely happening on Friday, October 13th, the Creative Pro Wrestling Women's Championship Tournament continues as the other two first round matches will be taking place that night. No word who's who will be in those matches, and there's no word yet on when the tickets go on sale. But I'm wondering, since it's the Halloween Costume Rumble returns that night, I wonder if the show title will, will, have Hall will, will be Halloween-themed. You know, back in 2019, there was Hardcore Halloween. And then, in October of 2021, we had Halloween Housen, where Dan Housen appeared. And that was right before he got signed by AEW. I don't even keep up with AEW anymore, folks. And not because it's run by that money mark, Tony Khan, who, by the way, doesn't know shit about football either, just because he co-owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, another thing, uh, yeah, show ended around around just about 11 o'clock. I was hoping to catch the uh, train from uh, Lindbrook train station. I went up the elevator, but unfortunately, the train going to Penn Station was on the other, stopped on the other platform, and I missed it, and I didn't want to wait. Who knows how long I would have had to wait, so I ended up taking an Uber home. Hmm. Ooh, let me see what other matches over here. I gotta say, I know it's Tommy. I've said this in the past. I mean, Tommy's fake uh, Tatanka war cry. That's you know making people laugh, and also saying "do" with like a Scooby Doo or dog's voice. Oh, what a rush! From there, mm. I mean, like I said, Tommy, Tommy pretty much corrupted his girlfriend, Robin, as well as Jeffrey. They were, all three of them were yelling, tiny wee wee at evil Kip. Well, this one, actually, another memorable quote comes to mind. Evil shit, evil shit, evil shit. The crowd at evil Kip during the match with Bryce Donovan. Well, I wouldn't go so far as say evil, but what's what's really good about about poop knowing it smells, whether it comes out of a human or an animal? Oh, Burger Shack on Broadway, right by Lindbrook train station. Well, even though it said Burger Shack, it says Taco Shack and Wing Shack, but I got a damn good chicken burrito. I might, I might go to that place to, uh, again to eat in, in, when it comes to future shows in Lindbrook. Ah, uh, brother. Oh, let's see. Let me see. Going over these matches again. Hmm. Well, matches that are seem to be coming up October 13th. Uh, crapola. Well, I mean, you know, I was, I mean, looking back, as good as this show was, it, it didn't top, uh, Breaking Barrier, wait, it, it didn't top, uh, break, Breaking Boundaries back in July, and, you know, I don't know if this show sold, wound up sold out or not, if they, I think they still had, might have had very small amount of tickets left at the door, 
because uh, a lot of people were not here. I mean, Eric Rourke wasn't seen. Brian Myers didn't wrestle. Didn't see Jack Tomlinson. Uh, who else was missing? Either missing or whatnot. Uh, we know Steve Summer, uh, Steve and Azure. I think he might have been in attendance, but I mean, he can't wrestle right now. Uh, Pat Fitzpatrick and Jay Macias didn't have a match. Uh, yeah, but you know, ew. this was very good, not surprisingly. Can't remember what I mean, creative pro wrestling in my four plus years of going to their shows, you know, I have not been to a bad one yet. Uh, well, seeing we know about the October 13th event, uh, I wonder, Creator Pro, if you're going to run, run a show in December or not. Because, uh, I know the year is, even though it's already September, I don't know, I don't want to say the year's winding down, but, you know, I just, I hope you run in December, and I don't know if they're going to have a 10-year anniversary show in March. I'm guessing that might end up in Melville or somewhere else. Let me see. What else can I discuss? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wonder who. I don't know who Gabby Forza will wrestle on the next show since so she's already won her first round match in the uh, the tournament. Uh, Hmm. I wonder if, if any of the ladies, whether it be if the ladies will be in that Halloween costume rumble. Uh, I don't know, guys, if I'm gonna be able to even make this show. I mean, Friday night shows are really hard for me to make. No, I gotta work till four thirty, and I, I really don't want to keep taking take too many days off. So, uh, oof, this was very good and. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed this video, and I'm surprised Heartache Tonight by the Eagles wasn't played to start the show. But, oh, before we, I do go, uh, right before um, the show started, among the shows, I mean, the songs that were played were the, was, uh, I guess, a one-hit wonder. Uh, a band known as the Crash Test Dummies, and they had a song called, Mmm, 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 Mmm. Yes, that's the name of it, all... M's across the board. <laughs> and speaking of which, seeing that if October 13th ends up a Halloween themed or or have the word Halloween in the show title, I wonder will will Bobby Boris Pickett's Monster Mosh be played on loop, much like right before um right before um Halloween Housen back in October 2021. <laughs> wow. We'll see. Like I said, I, I hope I make it October 13th. Because, you know, it might be tough to do it. C-A-P. 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 Creator Pro, you certainly let the wrestling speak.